The following segment comes from a full SEC preview episode from Running Out the Clock. If you like what you hear in this segment, then be sure and subscribe to the channel so that you can catch all of our SEC previews, including whether or not we think the teams discussed in these previews will do better, worse, or the same this season. The Razorbacks with new head coach Roe, what's his name? Uh, Zach Morris. <laughs> yeah, that was it. That was it. Is, that, is that right? Yeah, yep. I mean, it's, it's right enough. It's right enough. Yep. No, it's Chad Morris. Okay. Okay, thank you for that. Chad Morris taking over from SMU, going over to Arkansas. Uh, a complete stylistic change in terms of uh, how a team would be run, concerning they're coming from Burt, who uh, found as many large human beings as possible and told them to move slowly around the field. And was himself a large human being. Yes, exactly. And so he moved slowly around the field. You can't uh, convince me that he didn't clone himself 48 times. <laughs> possible. <laughs> possible. It is. I mean, I don't know if he has clone money sitting around, but... Uh, this is what you were talking about, man. It just means more. It just <laughs> means... It means way too much. Chad right, Morris... Spread offense coach coming in after being, uh, yeah, three years at SMU, OC at Clemson before that. Uh, what do we make of this? I'm going to, in, in, in tradition normally, whenever I am the moderator of a podcast like this, I go down the line in alphabetical order, which means that Chandler gets to make the first comment about this <clears throat> Arkansas season, uh, what we can kind of expect or what he's thinking, at least, we can expect out of the Razorbacks this year. Yeah, I mean, Arkansas, I mean, they they were bad last year, and they they had to make a change. I mean, the, the it was one of those things that you looked at – you looked at Burt's record. Like, you looked at you looked at the the kind of aura surrounding Burt, and you're like, oh, they're, they've done pretty well. And then you looked at his uh, – you looked at his actual coaching record, and it was abysmal. Uh, it was it's so bad. <laughs> and so, and so, you know, I mean, like, like basically, Hugh Freeze kept him employed at Arkansas for like two years longer – it would have been otherwise because of all those just insane, uh, insane wins that just didn't make any sense. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's a complete, I mean, it's, they've got, they've got to restart the program from the ground up. I mean, they're, they're completely changing styles. Um, they don't really have, um, they don't really have much of anything. I mean, you know, um, I, I think the most interesting, the most interesting thing to look at is, is it going to be, you know, Cole Kelly, who's like seven, four and 800 pounds, or is it going to be Ty Story, who is some guy I've never heard of playing quarterback? Um, I'm surprised you've heard of the first guy. I'll be honest with you. I didn't. Oh, you never heard – you don't remember, like, the, the massive dude playing quarterback that, like – he was he was, he was was actually pretty hysterical. Uh, it was kind no, of – No, because in my mind, one of, the Allen, Lorenzo. one of the Allen brothers has been the quarterback at Arkansas for the past 30 years. Yeah. My entire lifetime, yeah. there's been an Allen there. Yes. That's, that, well, except for the, the 24 years that Matt Jones is the quarterback. Right. Um, but um, I no, quit I mean, keeping I mean, up with them after Ryan Mallett. I don't. I I don't know who's Arkansas. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's just going to. It's, gonna, it's it, still Ryan Mallett, actually. Really, really <laughs> this year. You know, this year when you look at their schedule, I mean, because uh, I kind of just jotted everybody down. I mean, they've got three games that I think they'll win for sure. I mean, they got Eastern Illinois, North Texas, and Vanderbilt. Those will be wins. Um, you know, they go to Colorado State, which is interesting. Um, they get Ole Miss and Little Rock. They get Tulsa at home, and then LSU at that point in the season could be uh, an absolute, um, absolute dumpster fire at that point. So, I mean, if they can find a way to get to five or six wins, that might give them some momentum in Texas recruiting. Um, I mean, Arkansas kids seem to be pretty excited. So, I mean, th this year's a complete pass for Arkansas and Chad Morris. I mean, it's just all it's all going to come down to. What kind of what kind of momentum can you generate for next year and really the year after that? Because it's going to yeah. take them a little while to get it rolling there. It's going to be really difficult to to get a whole lot of momentum there. Uh, Keith, we had kind of talked about this on the last episode we did, where we talked about the new coaches, um, and uh, that's kind of I mean what Chandler was saying was pretty much what we were uh, thinking as well. One of the things that is um, very notable is that uh, Morris has. A deep connections in Texas recruiting before he ended up being like an OC anywhere. He was uh, or on the college ranks. He was a longtime Texas high school coach. And uh, I mean, if there's any, if, if 
it's the second most competitive league behind the SEC is Texas high school. Mm-hmm. Um, so the question <laughs> clear is, eyes full hearts. <laughs> clear eyes, full hearts. Uh, so the question is, I mean, what do we think as far as what would be a realistic rebuild for Arkansas in terms of time frame? How long do you think it would actually take him to tap into those, um, you know, deep high school, Texas high school potential recruiting ranks there and, uh, and actually build a squad? Well, and, and, and quick question with with that quite like what what do we define as a rebuild? Uh, well, I would say not one in seven in the league. Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, let's just let's just start there. Like maybe they climb to the middle of the West. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think I think they can do it within three or four years. Okay, uh, Keith, that was a question for you. Um, I mean, yeah, I, I, can't <laughs> I can't tell if Keith is still with us because he doesn't own a webcam. So it's just a still picture. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd say probably two or three years, but you have that interesting phenomenon where a new coach comes in and the team does a lot better than they have any business doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we saw Houston Nutt come into Ole Miss and uh, take a team that wasn't very good, and, and they won a whole bunch of games their first couple of years. And Well, that team put um, a ton of players in the NFL, though. Sure, but – but prior to that, they were, but they weren't great. I mean, Orgeron left and it was kind of a mess. And then Nut came in and things weren't as much of a mess anymore. But um, I don't know. Their their defense last year was super bad. Um, they left uh, spring camp without having uh, named the uh, starting quarterback. Uh, I guess. The silver lining to them is that they've got a, a a pretty good backfield that should be fun to watch if their offensive line can not get them murdered. Uh, yeah, which is the big first question. Couple of yards. Yeah, so. That's it's something you just pointed out is, uh, is something we hadn't really touched on yet because we've been talking a lot about the offensive players. Um, yeah, have some – some big bruising backs that maybe don't fit with what Morris wants to do style wise down the line, but it's what he's got to work with now. (laughs) So he's going to have to enjoy it. But yeah, you just mentioned it. The defense uh, was bad in sec play. They gave up 7.1 yards per play this past season. Uh, Not what you would consider to be good. (laughs) Right. I mean, it's not ideal, not ideal. (laughs) So Ro, if we're talking about a team, that doesn't have a quarterback right now, has a questionable offensive line, has a defense that gave up 7.1 yards per play. (laughs) You look at this, what do you realistically expect out of Arkansas, who finished last in the West this past year? Oh, buddy. Oh, what do I expect? What a great question. I I think that uh, that things are about to get a little bit different at Arkansas. Uh, it's certainly a different hire. Uh, I'd probably say that, uh, Zach Morris is, is, a, a dream <laughs> as a coach. There's no doubt in my mind, you know, the only thing I know about this guy is that at SMU, he like went, he like didn't have a good record at all. It's, it's really not that great. Like 14 and 23 or something like that. But, yeah. But uh, SMU also was in worse shape than Arkansas is now when he got it, there. I, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I get it totally. I, I really do. But the video that keeps popping up in my little Twitter feed about Arkansas is Chad Morris uh, literally dropping in on signing day at an event in Little Rock where he's rappelling from the ceiling. <laughs> so, and I'm, look it up. I'm not making it up. It's true. I watched it like a hundred times. <laughs> you know, but honest to God, it's going to be a lot different. Sting. It's, it's, it's Sting. coming down from the he's rafters, got got face face. <laughs> which is weird because his son plays at Kentucky. I keep saying that it's going to be different, but but it's really what I mean by that. And let me clarify this: that they're going to find a whole lot of different ways to lose even more football <laughs> games. I just don't like like looking at all the college football previews and everything like that. Like they have a a, a quarterback who's like six seven that might be the the starting quarterback they don't know yet mm-hmm. and then they have the good backfield like keith mentioned but they their defense is so awful like mm-hmm. they are 
not good. Like you can't, it doesn't matter what happens. I, I would say if they can beat LSU this year, then they'd have a good year. And that's really about it. <laughs> that's yeah. That's about it. I, but they're the, not going to win a lot of games. Yeah. The, the, the thing, I mean, just the thing to me about Arkansas is like, Morris is going to bring the kind of football that you have to play to win at Arkansas because you're not yes. going to go out and get you're not going to go out and get the first round draft picks that Alabama always has on defense. You're not going to go out and consistently get the best running backs that Texas has. So you've got to come in and you've got to get that spread offense. It's just going to take a, it's going to take a while to put it in. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, and they might be able to steal some of those, you know, Texas high school quarterbacks who kind of like like nobody notices because there's a million high schools in Texas and each of them have a quarterback that runs a spread offense, you know? And so they end up somewhere that just throws the ball, like an air raid type system. And they throw the ball all the time and they're productive college players that no one expected. Cause they just were a generic Texas high school quarterback. Well, you, yeah, it's funny. You you those, you like, that, yeah. It's funny. You mentioned that because I got a little beat on a, on a guy named Jonathan Mox Moxon who might, might be pretty good here in the near future. He's uh he's at West Canaan High School football. I don't know if you uh know where that is. No, of course not. Why is no one getting that? my reference right now? Because Mox nope. is definitely from Varsity Blues. Okay. okay. He's, on high school right. he, he's under the radar. He takes over the team. Let's move on. <laughs> no, I've only seen Friday Night Lights. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's, Varsity that's the Blues. only football show worth watching. That's all you're supposed to see. <laughs> all you're supposed to see. Before we move on to anyone else, uh at, when we get to the end of this episode, we will actually assess all four of these teams to decide whether we can see them doing better, uh, worse, which wouldn't apply. <laughs> I don't know how you could yeah. necessarily get worse than last in the conference, but uh, better, worse, or the same. But So we won't get into that right now. But, uh, Keith, you mentioned earlier you're thinking it has to take at least, uh, you know, it could take up to like five years, like an entire recruiting class coming mm-hmm. in and graduating to actually see the type of success um, that uh, Arkansas would want to see under Morris. What do you think are the odds, though, Keith, that they keep him around longer than, like, two years? <laughs> uh, keep him around longer than two years? I'd, I'd, I'd say that there's a really good chance, probably 75 80%. Now, once you get – that third year is always kind of where uh, – unless things are just disastrous, like like the first two years – I mean, like going one or two for, you know, mm-hmm. um, unless they're like cataclysmic, then they're going to keep them around for longer than two years. It's always that third year where people start to expect like the actual results that were promised during the interview. Um, right. And so that's that's where I would set my over under at. So you're thinking that third year is the year. Yeah. I I can get down with that. I can get down with that for sure. Thanks again for listening to this specific individual team preview. If you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe to Running Out the Clock so you don't miss any more of our SEC previews leading up to this season. You can find the full episode that this comes from by searching for our 2018 SEC preview full episodes. And you'll want to listen to that because we give a verdict at the end of whether or not we feel like the team mentioned will do better, worse, or stay the same. For Running Out the Clock, I'm your friend Joseph Craven. Thanks for listening.